The world's over in 2030. Why go to the gym? Why get strong? Why work hard? Why get rich? Why be funny? Why be charismatic? Why do anything? It doesn't matter. The world's going to end. Sit in your pod. Wait for the food delivery. That's what they want from all of us. They want all of us to have absolutely no ambition and to sit there and be slave-minded. It's very difficult to resist enslavement if you need the government to eat. I find it amazing that men will sit and watch movies about prisoners of war in Japan or watch movies about men who go to war and risk their lives or watch all these hero movies and they have admiration for the hero and they believe themselves to be some version of a hero and then they're too afraid to say no to putting on a mask. If you're not gonna say no to putting on a mask, don't watch hero movies anymore. Cause you're certainly not a hero. You are one of the villains. You're not even one of the important villains. You're not even one of the villains with the name. You're the stupid little henchmen who get beaten up. Those guys who are on screen for a flash of a second and die without consequence. Nobody even cares or mentions them again. Their family don't even get to give them a funeral. They're nobodies. You're a nobody villain. You're not even an important one. The important villains, we know their names. You're a number, you're not a name. If you're gonna watch superhero movies, don't put a mask on your fucking face. And if you wanna be a superhero in life, you need to understand that for 80% of the movie, you're gonna suffer. For 80% of the movie, you're going to lose. Watch any superhero movie. For 80% of the movie, it is nothing but pain and frustration and difficulty. And when your life is that way, you have a chance to grow into something fantastic and you should thank God for every difficult thing he puts in your path. Let's talk about your brother. I have seen him really kicking ass out there and he's an amazing guy. Let's talk about Tristan. I have the best brother on the planet and he's the best brother on the planet because we are a team and we are a truly unbreakable team. And we've always been a team. I can't imagine a there's never been a point in our lives we were not a team. We've been a team since the absolute beginning. And two brothers are worth 10 men. Two brothers are worth 10 friends. And that's just how we are as men and we approach everything together. He has said to me repeatedly, they better not put you in jail without me. They better put us both in jail. If you're going to jail, I'm going to jail. I was about to say, what was it like in jail? Let's talk about that. It's kind of interesting because we drew strength from the fact that we knew the other was being strong at all times. And that gives you an incredible source of strength. Like, I knew he was being a man, and he knew I was being a man. When enough men get in a room and get pissed off, we'll charge at machine guns. It's amazing what you can do to the male psyche. When you have men around you who are brave, we can literally go over the top of the trench. It's incredible what can happen. So that's the biggest source of strength for me and my brother. We'll walk in the same room, give each other a nod, don't even say a word, and we're instantly ready to die because we've always been that way. And I only like hanging around with men who think that way. And that's why another reason, if you want to apply it to society, one of the reasons they attack masculine friendships so heavily and try and make out like men shouldn't be friends and being friends with men is gay and all this garbage. They try and destroy it because they want men lonely because as a lonely man, you're much easier to kill. The problem they're having is that we're telling the truth and we're repeatedly telling the truth and we have morals and we have standards and we're standing up for what we know is right and we're standing up for God and we're doing the right thing. So how do they attack us? It's very difficult to say we're not principled or intelligent or correct. So instead they have to say we're bad people. So to say somebody's a bad person, what you do is you weaponize a virtue. You say he's misogynistic or he's homophobic or you find some virtue and you put it into a bullet and you shoot it at them. And it's all just character assassination tactics. They can't say we lie because we tell the truth and we keep repeatedly being proven telling the truth. So instead they have to assassinate our characters. That is their primary goal and objective. And that's why the process itself is a punishment. I tell you the BBC in the, in the 18 months, the BBC have been printing about me being a human trafficker because they've done a, an article a day, every day for 18 months. Three staff members of the BBC have been caught committing sexual crimes three of their own staff. It's mentioned for a day, maximum two, and then it goes away. And here I am 18 months later, still going through the grinder of endless character assassination. It's insane. You're either on their team and they protect you or you're against them on the side of God and truth and they're absolutely out to destroy you. Every single thing the MSM say is a fucking lie. And I apologize for swearing, but it is a lie. Everything I read in these papers, all of it is a lie, head to toe. Now it is a damn fucking lie. But perhaps you should put the solitary confinement workout book out. I'm serious, because we're going to find it post. I saw it like a damn you came out. You, you were working out and like you had a Schwarzenegger arms. What was your regimen in there? Yeah, so I, I knew the guards were watching me and I'm stubborn. And I believe that every time I did push ups and they saw me doing them, I believed in my heart it annoyed them. And I am a very stubborn man. 
because they wanted me to be sad and broken. But every time they saw me, I was sweating and training. And every single time they'd check, they saw nothing but a lion who refused to stop doing push-ups. And they didn't want to do push-ups. They were too lazy. They're sitting around. They're the guards. They're not doing anything. And every single time they checked me for weeks and weeks and weeks, all I did was train. And I found the motivation to do it by knowing that it bothered them that I refused to quit. I'm stubborn like that. I And I don't even know if it's true. All I know is that I can adopt a mental model which makes me as competitive as possible and I decided my push-ups bothered them and they were the ones who were keeping me locked in a room so I will do push-ups at them. I didn't do push-ups for me. I did push-ups at them endlessly. If I was awake, I was doing push-ups or I was resting preparing for my next set at them. It was my only weapon of defiance. How many did you do a day? Thousands. 1,500, 1,600 a day. Oh my God. Man, I remember feeling Endless. sorry for you and worried about you. And then I saw you, when you boiled out of there, I was like, what the hell? Think about a superhero movie. A man is unfairly imprisoned in a Romanian jail cell and trained so hard he emerges stronger than ever before. That is a movie. You get to live a movie as a man if all you had was some balls. Even you, think about your movie. You're literally saving the world, predicting the future. Our movies, I'm the most Google man alive. We are living movie scripts. Why? Because we have bravery. Most men sit there and wonder why they're depressed because you don't get to live a movie. You're not the main character of anything. You're not even a secondary character in anyone else's movie. You're an unimportant nobody because you were afraid your entire life. You've lived like a coward your whole life. You were afraid of what might happen if you have some balls. And then you wonder why you're depressed. I'd be depressed if I was you. Of course, your life sucks. I'd rather go to jail as me than live free as you because when you're free you can't even do anything you can't go where you want you're broke you can't have sex girls don't want you you can't speak because no one listens so what are you free to do you're more in jail than i ever was when i was in jail i was getting thousands of love letters from beautiful women around the world every single tweet i put out was watched by millions of people i wasn't in jail most of these people who have lived with cowardice in an attempt to preserve their freedom aren't even free and that's what they don't understand. They're enslaved worse than I ever have been or ever will be. My mind is free. I'm allowed to think what I want to think and say what I want to say. They have thoughts and they go, hmm, don't know if I should say that. They second guess themselves. They're their own worst enemy. Every single part of me is on my team. I have enemies who want me dead, fine. But every single part of me, my mind, my hands, my legs, every single part of me is on my team. My body doesn't second guess itself. My mind doesn't turn on itself. We don't break and self-sabotage. There's no civil wars inside of Andrew Tate. All of us against you, all of us.